Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Affirmation Addict Podcast. Today, I'm going to be diving into all things about our chakras. And if you have not heard of chakras, this is a really powerful episode because it's something we all have within us. It's connected to our body and it's what connects us to our higher selves. So I hope you enjoy. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Agarwal. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so, so much for being here, and I'm so excited to dive into today's episode. Actually, wait, before we get started, I wanted to check with you. Have you heard about my new app? It's called Affirm It, and it's your one-stop shop for all things affirmations, manifestation, and self-healing. I really have been wanting to create something for you that truly empowers you to realize that you genuinely have everything you need within you. You don't need me. You don't need any other coaches. This app genuinely has everything you need to get that life that you've been trying to manifest. And it has gentle daily reminders, guided audio affirmations, sleep affirmations, affirmation reminders, and so much more good information, good energy, and so many things that I know will help you manifest your dreams. Because I'm so grateful for you, I'm actually offering you a free seven-day trial. And this is a genuine seven-day trial. That means you don't have to type in your credit card. You won't be automatically charged. There's no ads and you get complete access to the app as if you've already subscribed to it. So if you do want to learn more about the app, head over to affirmation-addict.com slash app, or if you're ready to dive in, head over to the iTunes app store and search for Affirm It. The Android version will be coming soon, and as soon as it's ready, I'll be sure to let you know. Now we can officially dive into today's episode. Hey everyone, how are you? How's it going? I hope today is feeling so, so good for you because I'm so excited to dive into today's topic. It's something that I actually grew up learning about, grew up being taught and Honestly, I took it for granted so, so much. So today I'm going to be talking about chakras. And to spell that out for you, in case you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, the spelling for a chakra is C-H-A-K-R-A. So these chakras are something that are within our bodies. And there's seven main chakras that we all talk about. And it's very, very known in the yoga world, in the Ayurvedic world in Hinduism and Buddhism. So it's something that is really well known, widespread, but a lot of us don't really know how to integrate it and don't really know what they actually mean. And so today I want to take you through the journey of what chakras are, why they even matter, and how they really relate to you. Something that I'm doing on my Instagram right now is actually going through and teaching you guys about what each chakra imbalance looks like and how to help balance those chakras. So that'll make a little more sense as I dive in. But the reason this is so important is because all of us have these energetic centers. So before I confuse you too much, I'm going to start off with explaining what a chakra is. So a chakra is an energy center and 
in Hindi, chakra or even Sanskrit, I'm sure, um, chakra means a circle. It means kind of like a cycle or a wheel. And so that's really what these chakras are. They are wheels of energy, circles of energy that are within our body and along our spine. And they are not literally on your spine. They're actually in the center of your body. So like two inches from your belly button and two inches from your spine, like literally the center of your body. And they're not physically there, but there are tests, there's aura readings that can actually detect these chakras, which is super cool now because that science is now available. Um, But all people have them, and it's just energy fields. It's the center of our energy, and they completely relate to the different organs, the different emotional signals that are associated with that part of the body. And these chakras also have colors associated with them, and these colors are more energetic and I will kind of go through give you a baseline introduction as to what these chakras are what certain imbalances or overactivity or underactivity might look like just to get you started but as I mentioned before on my Instagram and within the app I am diving deep into this work in order to help you understand your own chakras and help you get them in alignment so going from bottom to top and the bottom is at the base of your spine, kind of your tailbone area. That is going to be your root chakra. Then you move up a few inches and it becomes your sacral chakra near your belly button. Then you move up a little bit more, and that is your solar plexus. And these three um, are the bottom half of your chakras, and they're really important because this is where your sense of self comes in, your emotions, your insecurities, the way you see yourself in the world. These three chakras are so important, and for most of us, they're a little bit out of balance because a lot of us have insecurities about who we are. We have fears about being abandoned. Your inner child trauma is stored here, and that's why this is where the power happens house is in terms of your intuition, your gut feeling, your natural instincts. All of that is held here. And you'll notice that when say you have a funny feeling, sometimes you get tingles in your stomach. That's actually your chakras being activated. And when you get butterflies in your stomach, that's activating your sacral and your solar plexus chakra. So it's really cool to understand the energetics behind things we've all grown up experiencing. And I think it's so cool to really merge our two worlds of daily life and a little bit of more spirituality and our higher selves. So those are the three bottom chakras, and the colors actually are red, orange, and yellow, so more warmer tones, right? Now we're going to move up, and this is self-explanatory, it's your heart chakra. This is your fourth chakra, and some people say it's one of the most powerful chakras because it's in the center of all the chakras, and that's why you hear a lot of terms around heart center and expand your heart and mind and heart coherence. Your heart is a really, really big energy field, and that's where you, a lot of us, get to understand where our compassion, our love, and who we are, a lot of it is focused in our heart. We have so much energy here. It's almost more powerful than our brains. We just don't know how to tap into it sometimes. So our heart chakra is something that is huge, huge, huge. And the energy in the heart chakra is felt by people around you immediately. So to give you a quick recap, I know it's a little hard because it's not visual. The bottom three are more about your sense of self. They're more about your place in the world, the way you see yourself when you look at the mirror. Your heart is where your heart is in the center, kind of center of your chest. And that begins to shift from more so self to others, self to your entire world, self to your connection with others, to your connection with the universe. That's kind of, in my opinion, where the chakras start to transform. 
And now moving up, the next chakra above your heart chakra is your throat. Your throat chakra is a really, really powerful one because this is your hub and your center of communication, expression, authenticity. And this is really important in the way we're able to speak up, express our truth, and share what matters to us. So many of us have had these experiences and these comments made to us that your voice doesn't matter, you're not worthy of speaking up, your opinion isn't important. And this is where your throat chakra comes in. Your throat chakra is all about encouraging you to express yourself clearly, express your truth without shame. And it's my favorite chakra to work on with my clients because I think this is the chakra that people think it's so easy to understand, so easy to do. But I think once you can truly express your truth, that is when the game changes. And I think it's a lot harder to understand that until you have someone guiding you through that process. So this chakra for me is my favorite to help clients explore because I think it's the most underrated chakra that has so much power. Now moving up, this is the point in between your eyebrows. You have probably heard about this through different meditations. You've probably heard about this in your yoga classes. This is your third eye and it obviously has a lot of energy there. This is where your intuition is. This is where your vision and your connection with your life purpose and how you are going to serve the world and your vision for your future. This is where that lies in your third eye chakra. And some people love this chakra because they love having a plan. But some people really struggle with this chakra because they crave a plan, but they're trying way too hard to get it. So that's where the third eye comes in. It's the seed of your purpose here, your journey on earth, your journey in this lifetime that is completely seated in your third eye. And that's why so many meditations tend to focus on your third eye because it's like a projector. It's like a screen in front of you and you're projecting what you want onto that screen. That's like what your third eye is. And lastly, moving up, this is more so at the top of your head and think about it facing up. Up. So most chakras you imagine facing forward as if you're just looking at yourself in the mirror. But for me, I really enjoy imagining my crown chakra facing up. I like to consider this as my chakra that's connecting me to my higher self, to the universe, to all other dimensions and realities. It's kind of that chakra of heightened senses, spirituality, limitless possibilities. It's where all of the juicy stuff comes in. That's where our crowns are. To me, it's our download and the channel between our higher selves. And so to walk you through quickly the importance of these chakras, go Going from your root to your crown, all of these have meaning, have purpose, and are so telling as to why we are the way we are. These chakras and the way their energy is is so indicative as to who we are and our personalities and the way we process emotions and feelings and experiences. And that is why these chakras are important. It's basically your mind and body connection in one area. If you work on your chakras, your mind and body become even more connected, which will therefore connect you to your soul and your higher self. So that's why the power of your chakras is so important because they are your kind of your sensors. They're your radars as to what's feeling good, what's feeling bad. Am I operating good in this area? So when you understand what the operational functionality of each chakra is, you're able to dive in and see, okay, does this chakra need some balancing or is it good? How am I in this area? So if you want to learn more about the balancing and if these chakras are balanced for you or need some alignment, my Instagram page and the app has guided details of, okay, Your root chakra looks like it's imbalanced if you are insecure, you feel abandonment, you never feel like things are enough. Those are three signs. And so I go through each and every chakra explaining what it looks like to have an imbalance and how to get that balance. 
I will dive into that in a separate episode, but first I wanted to give you an explanation as to what these chakras are and why they even matter. So something I really want to share with you is my experience with chakras and chakra alignment when I first was introduced to it. So I remember my dad growing up would always tell me, hey, did you know you have these seven energy centers and they dictate your whole world and a lot of us aren't even aware of them. And I would just say, okay, like I never really thought much of it. But once I started learning more about it, I was so amazed to see how my world unconsciously consciously revolved around these chakras because gaining that awareness and understanding really taught me that these chakras, these energy centers, these energy fields that are within me are the reason I energetically exist. It's like the basis of my energy and my vibration. If I can get in control of my chakras, I'm in control of my vibration, which means I'm in control of what I'm manifesting. So for those of you who aren't too aware of chakras, but you know law of attraction, obviously you want to manifest. That is why they're so important because your chakras are the creators of your vibration. Those chakras, those wheels that are circulating and constantly constantly creating your energy, they are dictating what type of energy that's being created. And if you direct some of your energy and your attention towards those chakras, you can choose the energy your chakras are creating. You can choose for your root chakra to be balanced. You can declare your solar plexus to be in alignment and shining bright. You can choose to enhance your heart chakra. You can choose to expand your crown chakra and have a deeper connection with your your higher self all by speaking and awareness and your intention. All of that stuff is so, so powerful. And once you understand, then you can actually start doing this magic. And so for me, finally understanding and connecting those dots between my childhood, my culture, and what I learn in books nowadays, it's been such a beautiful journey to see all of that just marry together in such a seamless way. It was something that was so close to my parents' hearts, my grandfather's, fathers and my grandmothers that I took it for granted. And it's just so funny how sometimes it takes you stepping away to learn that your parents or your family or your culture was right all along for you. And so I think it's such a beautiful full circle realization for me. And now me teaching you and spreading this awareness just feels so full. And it makes me feel like I'm really living out my purpose by merging my Eastern and Western mindsets and sharing that with you because something that I always wanted to do was merge both of my worlds and share that, whether it was through clothing before and then through art and now through mindfulness and spirituality. It's been so fun to go on this journey and document it and have you along there with me. So thank you so much for just being on my journey and for learning about chakras with me. And I would love to hear about your experience with chakras and what they mean to you and what you what questions you have, because I would love to do a Q&A and answer some more questions that are more specific about what each chakra you can do to help balance it. And a few tips as to what you can do to balance your chakras just right off the bat is to enhance the color of that chakra in your life. So if you are working on your heart chakra, that color is green. So wear more green, eat more green foods, maybe change your sheets to be the color green. Just the power of color is so, so strong. Write your affirmations in the color green, make your wallpaper green, make a mood board out of it. So that is just the basics and they're so powerful. I kid you not. But if you need more affirmations, I have have it in my app, which is called Affirm It, and that's available on iTunes and Android. I have chakra affirmations, a chakra visualization, and so much more in-depth tutorials and tools and different guides for you to go through if you are interested in working on aligning your chakras and aligning your vibration. So I hope this episode was informative and taught you and inspired you to learn a little more about your chakras. Play with it. Have fun with it. It's not something that you can ever mess up, as is anything on this journey. There's no such thing as messing up. So I love you so, so, so much, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Talk to you soon. 
So how did you like today's episode? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. And before you leave, I wanted to just say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for spending some time with me. If this episode or any of my content has ever inspired you, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could leave a review in the iTunes podcast app and just share this with someone you care about. The more you guys leave reviews and share this with people, the more I am able to create more content for you and that's what fuels me and keeps me going. I am so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today and until next time, I'm sending you lots of love and lots of healing energy. Bye!